Jim, if what you're talking about is, is part six, where it's a summary of overarching recommendations. There's 12 of them. The first one, of course, the uh, commission. The uh, chairman's on the way, folks. The chairman's on the way, and I'm going to do a roll call, so chairman, please bear with me. Yeah. Chairman, sit there. Chairman, chairman Yasko, are you there? Yes. Okay, very well. Uh, doing a simple roll call here. Is uh, Cindy Carpenter on the line? Yes, I am. And Kathy Haney? Yes. Michael Johnson? On the line. Eric Lee? I'm here. Uh, Brian Sharon? Mr. Sharon? You must have dropped off. Yep. Jim Wigan? Yeah, I'm here. Uh, Victor McCree? I'm on the line. Elmo Collins? Uh, Elmo Collins is on the line. And hey, Marty, you out there? Yeah, I'm uh, with the chairman. Okay, and uh, Brian Sharon again. Are you out there, sir? And he initially was on here, but he was in traffic, so he may have dropped off. Chairman, the call is yours, please. Hey, thank you. Uh, hi, everybody. Um, now, I'm going to tell you a little story. Um, March 16th. Maybe it was March 15th. I don't know, it was a Monday or a Tuesday. Um, I was uh, at the White House. And I had to do something uh, that I never thought I was going to have to do. And all the time that I, you know, I got this job, I became chairman. Oh, this is a great job. I got to travel to the world and be the chairman of the agency. I get my picture up on the wall. I was asked to do something that I don't think in the history of this agency has ever happened. But I was asked to go up to the podium uh, in the White House briefing room. Uh, now, I wasn't initially asked that. I um, uh, was heard that there was going to be a press conference. The, the government was finally going to make some statements about what was going on in Japan. And I, you know, at first, they were going to have DOE go and talk about Fukushima. And I heard that, and I thought, you know, I don't know, what should I do? I don't really, I mean, I don't really know these people in the White House that well. They don't really know me. I'm this, you know, 40-year-old guy, not a lot of experience in situations like this. Um, I don't know what I should do. So I, I called up a guy who well, I actually got a call from the White House. One of the people in the National Security Council was doing this about just some update on something else. And I said, by the way, you guys are going to do a press conference. It's going to be your first public statement about what's going on in Japan. I said, I think it's really important that you have the NRC there. I mean, we are the safety regulator. It's important for the words to come from our, our agency. And the person I talked to said, well, we didn't really ask because we thought you guys were independent. It's not appropriate. I said, look, in this case, we're the safety regulator. I think it, it matters. I think we should be it. And this was about 40 minutes uh, before the press, or an hour before the press conference was supposed to start. And, and the person I was talking to said, all right, well, let me get back to you. I said, well, look, it takes me about an hour to get down there. I'm just going to get in the car. If you don't want me to come, I'll turn around. Before I could even get out the door of my office, they had called back and said, come, we want you to come. I got down there, and we started talking about what I was going to say. And I don't know, you can pull the transcript the, 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 from this. But the fundamental question that people wanted to know, and that I had to answer, was why are plants in the United States safe, and why don't we shut them down? I could have said a lot of things. I could have said the easiest thing in the world, which was I don't know, and we may not, and I don't know. Because if I had said that, I would never be wrong. I would never have to worry that we'd have an earthquake at a nuclear power plant that exceeded its design basis, and that somebody could point back to me and say, how dare you have misled us, and said that everything was safe when it wasn't. And while it may have looked easy when I did that, I will tell you this, my knees were shaking in a way that they've never shook in my entire life. And I, I was worried. I was worried as hell. 
because I thought, what if I'm wrong? And the reason I was able to say that was because of what I heard from you and all of your staff. Because you were giving me information and I, I did not question it, I trusted it, and I accepted it. And as we went along over the next couple of weeks and there was congressional testimony, we, we refined it, but we stuck to our basic instinct, which is we've done a good job. And, and I, I will tell you, that was the hardest thing I've ever had to do. Because every statement I made is enshrined in history. And in the course of a week, maybe even less than that realistically, this country went from a desire to want to shut down every nuclear power plant in this country to being fine with the fact that we have them. And not a single plant was shut down. And the reason for that is because of what I said. And that's it. There's no other reason. Now, like I said, the easiest thing for me to do in that situation would have been to say, I, I just, I don't know, I can't answer that. I, I can't answer that. I'm going to need more information before I can make a decision. But I didn't have that as an option. I could not say that. I had to make a decision. And I trusted this agency and the decades of work that we have done to do what we do. But the one promise that I made was that if we needed to make changes, we would. So as an agency, as a commission, we tasked a group of people to figure out what those changes needed to be. And I have not gone back on any of my concerns or any of my statements about the fact that as, a, as an agency, as a country, as an industry, we believe nuclear power plants are, are not safe, are safe. And I'm not going to go back on my statement that if we need to make changes, we will. And I will use every tool at my disposal to make sure we make changes. And right now, the only information I have about what changes we need to make are from the task force that we created, that we gave 90 days to go and do good, thorough, solid look at what kinds of things we would need to change. And they did that. Now we're at a stage of giving a different group of people a look at the same information. And that's all of you. And what I'm hearing right now is that some of you don't agree with this task force. And my only message to you is that you better have a good reason not to. And if it's because you're worried you're going to be wrong, that's not a good reason in my book. Because I had to deal with that question and I did what I had to do. And all of you need to look in your hearts and look in your souls and figure out if you have a legitimate reason why you don't agree with one of these recommendations. And if you do, that's fine, and I welcome that. But keep in mind that these were some of our best people who we put on this task not to have their work second-guessed by you. I mean, and, and for many of you, these are your direct reports. These are your deputies in many cases. And we could have done this another way. We could have put different people on this. We could have put you guys on this task force. And maybe you would have done something different. Maybe you wouldn't have. They were specifically charged to figure out what we needed to do right now. So if you think differently, I appreciate that and I want to know it, but I am telling you, you better have a reason. And if you don't, then you can't disagree. I mean, you can, but no one understands what that means. So I've been told by multiple people that people agree with these 12 recommendations. Yes, there may be differences of opinion about implementation, but at the level of the 12 recommendations, we agree. We think they did a great job. So 
So what I've asked Marty to do is to put that in writing, to put those words in writing. And what I'm hearing is that there's difficulty among this group doing that. So I, I, as I said, I, I, I welcome your disagreements, I welcome those differences, but there better be bases for them. And they better be as well thought out and as well organized as what came out of the task force. I owe that to the task force, and I think you owe that to the task force. And I think you owe that to me, because I sat there in congressional hearing after congressional hearing and defended this agency, but I made one promise, that if we needed to make changes, we would. And all of you, almost to a person, have come up to me and said you did such a great job defending the agency. Well, it goes both ways. And I also made a commitment that we would make changes. And that commitment has to mean something just as much as the commitment where I said everything is fine up till now. So all I want you to do is think about this. I, I trust where Marty is going. I don't want to have to instruct Marty to put that in and ask you to non-concur, but if that's the way we can get this wrapped up, then that's what I probably will do. And I welcome your non-concurrences. I'm not telling you not to non-concur. I'm not telling you to think anything different than what you think. I, I welcome what you think, but there just needs to be a reason. And you need to be able to articulate it because the task force deserves to know that, I deserve to know that, the commission deserves to know that, the American people deserve to know that. Does everybody understand that? Does anybody not understand that? that doesn't 
doesn't help. It's not acceptable. We can't do that. We have to make decisions and we have to decide what we think. So I, I want you all to think about that. As I said, I, I am not telling you not to disagree. I want to be absolutely positively clear. I'm just asking you that if you're going to, have a good reason. That's what you owe me. It's what you owe the task force. It's what you owe the American people. Okay? Yes, sir. Good. Okay. Understand. Thank you. I believe we're still on. Marty, this is Eric. What do you need from us? I think I think I bet Marty's with the chairman. I think he probably needs to come and rejoin. So are we just gonna hang on this line? Yeah, I just hang on. Um, if you guys hang on, I will uh, call Marty on his BlackBerry and ask him to get on this line. Okay. Okay, I got it. So well, I came in about five minutes late because I kept dropping off because of the uh, connection. What caused the chairman's concern? It's a single sentence in the that meeting that uh, he and Marty want to insert in the uh, in the paper that says that this group, all of us, agree with the recommendations on the portion. You know, and 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 some of us had expressed uh, not just a disagreement with the president right, with the recommendations. I mean, well, at the recommendation level, the, the cardinal numbers, whatever yeah. they're one through, yeah, two through yeah, ten or two through twelve. Right. Hey, or, well, everybody who was on that line is still on the line. I told them that I was going to call you to try to get you back up on the line so we can do business and get this done right now. Okay. So. Yeah, you know, I don't, just, while we're waiting, you guys, we're still here, still on line. We're all here. Yeah, yeah. I'm not sure there's much left, uh, much left of an issue. I don't hang on. Thanks. Bye. Hey guys, this is Eric. I got Marty. He's he's, he's got a version of the uh, of the sentence, and he's calling back into the op center. He should be on the line soon. Thank you. Uh, yeah, I'd, uh, I'd like to just do business and get it done. Yeah, I, I really don't think this is a big issue. issue. Just um, it's not a big issue. No, it's, it's not a big. It's, it's not a big uh, issue. Yeah, if this is much less of an issue than I think it may have been portrayed. I, I think it is true that we have a differing, uh, we, we, when we look at implementation, we come out in a different place with, with respect to implementation. I think um, at, the, at the high level, at the recommendation level, um, I think just, I think we, all, we can all say that there's no recommendations that we would dismiss out of hand. Um, so it, I think it's just a matter of finding the sentence, agreeing to the sentence. Um, that's all. And uh, so I don't, I don't really understand why this is the issue that we think it is. It's, it's yeah, not thanks, a big deal. It's Marty. I just joined the bridge again. And so the context, I'm sorry I wasn't able to get to you all first. It's, sort of, you know, it's one of those things that just happened. <laughs> But the context was Bill and I spent about an hour with the chairman this afternoon from 11 to 12 um, talking through some of the issues. And one of the issues that came up when we had the meeting with him three weeks ago now, I was participating by phone, was he asked uh, the folks in the room whether at the, at the highest level, you know, if you go to the 12, and, and you can almost separate number one because the commission did, but he wanted us to, and, and we did on that, in that meeting, agree that we were, were supportive of moving forward on the 12. Now, that, that doesn't mean that as we move forward, we don't find something that changes our view on this, but I think he expected a very strong statement in the first paragraph of the paper, and this is what he told Bill and I today, that said at the, at the highest level, at the level of 12, that we support um, moving forward to uh, seek methods or however we're going to say this, to find a way to implement these recommendations. 
And again, I think that as we move forward, if you know, if we find some fatal flaw or some reason why we can't, well, then that, that's where we are. So this morning, oh, go ahead. I'm sorry, my I didn't mean to interrupt. No. Go ahead and finish. So um, since, since that noon meeting with the chairman, we have worked on a number of sentences and floated them via email. And, um, you know, what we need to do is get resolution on this. I think there's certain support moving forward on all of the recommendations, setting aside number one, it's fine with me. I think there's more agreement on the recommendations at that level than there are in some of the details. And it's not like me personally, it's not that I disagree with any of the damn things. It's just we haven't had the time or the opportunity beyond the ones that are in the 21-day paper to have the present, to have it evaluated. So it's a question of do we accept the task force as being correct and just argue the implementation methodology, or do we as a group want to understand more of the basis. Here's the two points that I get hung up on. One is the containment venting. Uh, everyone is on board with the Mark 1s. We don't quite understand what there is to the Mark 2s. Uh, I would suspect in the end we're going to say, yeah, go forward and vent them, but we haven't had that discussion yet. Spent fuel pool instrumentation and uh, equipment. There's the recommendation, the details of the, rec the, the recommendation level is to get more reliable stuff in there. And that's certainly accepted. We all agree to. But then you get into the details, it says provide safety related power supply, safety related instrumentation, that kind of stuff. At least I'm, I'm personally trying to figure out why it has to be safety related versus reliable. So it's a level of detail in the implementation strategies, with the exception of the containment. It's down at the how does the proposed sentence currently read? Well, the, the, the version we sent out, uh, the version I sent out, that the staff supports the task force recommendations and will continue to evaluate approaches to implement, I don't have the word in front of me, but implement the other recommendations. The key word is support. The, task, the staff supports the task force recommendations. And we could even say the 12, high level, or we could, we could find a way to work that in so that we're not dealing with the 34 because right from the get-go I have told the chairman and he acknowledged even today that I disagree with the proposed approach to implementation when you get down on 30 to the 34 level. So you know, if, if I could, this is Eric. If you talk with Jack and Dan, they, I was with them when they briefed the ACRS and they don't even agree with the 8 hours and 72 hours. They threw that out to frame the discussion to get the discussion going. So they would even say that they don't agree at that level. If you if you look at it from the higher level, I agree with you, Marty. The general gist of the recommendations, that I can agree with. That's why I suggest that the language I support, we support moving forward with all of the recommendations is the right language. If and I like the high level thought, you know, the clarify. The recommendations at, at the high level rather than the implementation details. But I think we can all say we want to move forward. We agree with moving forward. At the end, Jim, we may decide, Mark 2, we need to understand that better. Uh, we may decide that, you know, some other detail of the implementation is different. But support moving forward, I think we were all aligned with respect to that. Uh, there is nothing that came up in any of the discussions of us that would be contrary to what you just said. It is when you get into the details. Uh, and I don't, know, I, don't, I don't have the report in front of me about the containment overpressure. But if the recommendation says you have to have a way of dealing with containment overpressure, then, then we're out of the woods. It's where does the Mark II come up? Because, you know, Brian wasn't on the line. I know Brian has the same question about why Mark II. And I think the text of the task force report is very strong on Mark I's. It's less strong on the need for Mark II's. We, that's one of the items I think we need to look at during the 45 days. You know, what's the what's the rationale behind the Mark II? And then we can figure out the implementation strategy. Hey, Marty, Marty, do you think that the sentence as written would preclude uh, further down the line us evaluating the issue that Jim is uh, concerned about? And, and there could very well be others uh, on the Mark II, uh, you know, the applicability of the recommendation to Mark II. Do you think, think that the Senate has written would preclude that? 
No, I don't think anything we write will preclude that. I mean, you know, it's just a matter of having, he wants in the very first paragraph a very strong statement from us to say that, you know, we, we support the 12 and or we support the 11 and we're going we're gonna to seek ways to, to move forward to, to build on and Bill used this, uh, this expression today, said we want to build on the work of the task force. Well, Ted, Marty, I'm going to, if I can, this is Eric. In the summary, I'm looking at the report, I'm looking at the recommendations, and it's uh, under Section 6, it calls Summary of Overarching Recommendations. And those are the ones, the 12, that I think we're talking about, and that's how I would, I would recommend characterizing them as overarching recommendations because it has that direct link. Those are the words used in the report. Okay. Let us, let us take this offline, work up some words, and, and get them out to you, and uh, get your feedback first thing in the morning. Does that sound That's good. That's good. Yeah, it works for me. I, I, I think you're, I think it'll, it, this is, this is easier than we're making it out to be. Yeah, I mean, it's, he's only drawn, I mean, he hasn't seen the paper. He only knows what he knows from my discussion with Bill. Yeah, Bill and I had from 11 to 12 with him today. But, I mean, there were just a few things that, you know, he came back to, and they, this was one of them because of that meeting we had three weeks ago. And he just does not, you know, does not understand why we can't put this statement in here. And at this point, I think we can put the statement in there. So we'll write something up and get it out to you first thing tomorrow morning. Well, I think you put whatever, put whatever statement you want as long as we all know what it means. That's it. We can all collectively understand what that means. Okay? Okay. So when you say support the recommendations, we know what that means. Okay. Other other thoughts? Yeah, I just wanted to, this is Mike, I just wanted to, you know, if there is any, I don't, I don't understand the message about courage and that. You know, none of this has to do with whether or not anybody has the courage to take an action. Uh -huh. No, I, th I think, you know, what he's, he's coming back to is what, you know, he pressed Bill and I today, and, you know, it was about we don't, you know, in some areas, at the level of 34, we don't have enough information right now to, to move forward. You know, we're still, that seven came off the, the table because we needed additional information. Right. So, so Mike, do, do you want to put that in the paper, too? No, that's <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm, I'm okay with moving forward, I'm moving forward, support you. I, you give us language, Marty, we can sign up for it. Okay, thanks a lot. Let's get yep, same here. Hey, Marty, it's uh, 1 o'clock in the morning here, and Jim, Jim Lyon sends his regards. Oh, my God, what are you guys doing up? <laughs> yeah. Phone call from the chairman, we'll do that. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, wait a minute, you guys should leave the bar, go back to the hotel, and get some <laughs> Right, no, we're actually working on the...